Welcome back to Real Florida Magazine. Welcome back. Right here now in beautiful downtown Cottondale, Florida, we're on the road. We're taking a look at a taste of the real Florida here today in Cottondale at the Cottondale Corner Cafe. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Connie, Jean, and Mark uh, all about the brand new offering right here, uh, arguably in downtown Cottondale, Florida. This is uh, homestyle comfort food. It's uh, the stuff that uh, you want when you don't feel good. It's the stuff you want when you want to feel good. It's the stuff you want when you're hungry. This is the gut busting stuff that uh, the doctors tell you is bad for you, but it's the best stuff in the entire world. When we come back, we're going to talk to them about all this and more right here in downtown Cottondale, Florida, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. As mentioned, we're here today in downtown Cottondale, here at the Cottondale Corner Cafe. Jean, how did you come up with the name Cottondale Corner Cafe? Connie did. Connie, you were the one who's responsible. How did you come up with the name? Well, it was Jean's Corner Cafe years ago, and we decided that we would make a Cottondale Corner Cafe, so you had no doubt of where it was at. Yeah, and I knew that, and I knew that Jean had that Corner Cafe, and I, I gave you that in, that opening to, to be a hero and to... And to Mark, you actually work in Chipley at Northwest Florida Community Hospital. Yes. I think you would agree with me that we can always use more restaurants. You know, no matter how many you have, you get tired of eating at the same old places over and over again. Everybody loves to eat. <laughs> I confess it's one of my passions. It's one of my downfalls. <laughs> yeah. I'd love to eat. Now, um, are, are you, what, what part of the operation are you? I'm in dietary. Okay, so you're the one that's telling Gene, no, we can't do that extra that's pie today? Or if you want something to go wrong with your heart, you can eat pizza with extra bacon. Yeah, we, 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 uh, we kid sometimes that some of these restaurants, every 10th time you go in, they give you a, a free angioplasty. Um, Gene, um, what's your history and heritage in cooking? Uh, as far as, I know you had the restaurant before. Were you the cook uh, at, of the restaurant at the time? Some and some others did it too. We all done a lot of stuff. So more the silent partner property owner? Mm, yes. Okay. Um, and you're a little reluctant to talk, and that's okay. I know, Connie, I've been kind of veering away from you, but I know once I get you started, we're probably going to have to grab and rope and hang on. You're the one that actually contacted me and told me about this new venture for you guys. Tell me a little bit about the thought process um, that went into opening up this uh, cafe. Well, I'll tell you, I came by here, I moved into the area, and I started walking around Cottondale. And I fell in love with this place. So the day I walked by it the very first time and, and saw inside here, people have told me all my, a lot of years that I should open my own place. And nothing really appealed to me. But for some reason, I just fell in love with this place and started asking around and, and found Jean. And we kind of, it's, it's been steady stream since then. So, How long has the building sat vacant uh, without having a restaurant in it, Jean? Four years. Four years. And... Um, at the time that it was open, it served kind of the same kind of fare? Yes. Okay. So the, the value there, obviously, is the kitchen was already set up. You already had all the ovens and the, yes. the specifics that you needed. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, wh what's your thoughts? you excited about this? Um, I, if, if you're, I know you're a longtime resident. Uh, you're another opportunity to see a bunch of old friends and make new ones, I would imagine. Yes, I am excited. As excited as you're going to get her in. As excited as Jean, as, as Jean can be today. No, that's okay. That's all right. I'm just, I'm going to pick at you a little bit and hopefully, She's Jean's the short one if you notice too as well. Um, <laughs> as long as your legs are long enough to reach the ground though, right? That's right. That's right. Um, Connie, um, you're going to have pizza and subs and wings and Calzone. calzones. You've got a multi-ethnic fair here. Mm -hmm. um, from where do you hail, and, and how did you pick those, uh, those ethnic foods? Well, actually, this was pretty much what it was before. But uh, my husband and I both, we always are looking around for a pizza place or a breakfast restaurant, which nobody seems to have that around here. And I said, well, if they don't have it, then we're going to make one. And I love doing breakfast. I was a breakfast chef in a hotel in Michigan for about 10 years. Uh, come from quite a diverse background when it comes to that. So, and so does he. And uh, we just decided we really wanted to do something again around the area. And I'd really love to see this really flourish again in this area. So, Nothing brings a small town or a small community together 
like a, like a, a community TV station or radio station or cafe. That's right. Those are the places generally where news is disseminated. Sometimes news is made up and, and promulgated uh, unfairly sometimes. But nonetheless, it is where people meet and greet and, uh, and it's where people talk about births and deaths and uh, all the good and bad. So at the end of the day, um, you've really got a cool thing going here. It is truly a cafe. Looking yes. around, you sort of got a 50s rock and roll theme here. Absolutely. You've got the old Coca-Cola signs. You've got the 45 records on the walls. What kind of music are you going to be playing? Yeah, you got the jukebox there. What kind of music are we going to be hearing in here? Um, right now, it's all old country, but we can get a lot of rock and roll. Yeah, well, and country's good, too. I mean, it's interesting. We do you know that in any country in the world, in any city, in any country in the world, and I'm talking about Tokyo, I'm tra talking about Singapore, I'm talking about uh, Rio de Janeiro, the number one musical format in every city in the world is country music. Absolutely. American country music. Mm -hmm. So you can't deny that popularity. But I would imagine it's also kind of cool going someplace where there's something different. Mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, most people are listening to country, but if they come in here and get a chance to listen to those, Old what the, the music they heard at the sock hops. <clears throat> right. Yes. And uh, we're kind of all the same vintage. Uh, um, yes. And so, uh, you know, thinking back to the 50s and the 60s music, what, what were you doing back in those days? Are you old enough to remember that? Uh, I was young in the 60s. I'm not as old as you think I am. Well, I didn't say that you were old. I said that you, you were kind of from that vintage. What year were you born? 54. Okay, well, that's only two years younger than me. How old are you? 65. Oh, well, see, you're, six, you're, oh, you're 65, you were yeah. born in 65. No, I was born in 50. Okay, yeah. and what about you? 51. Good. Whoa, you married a young guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, um, during the, the time in which we all had our formative years in grade school and high school, we were listening to that, that rock and roll. You know, the Vietnam days were going on, Absolutely. all the yes. turmoil. Mm -hmm. And um, not that we want to bring those memories back, but being able to play some of that old rock and roll is, is pretty cool. Now, the yeah, venue you've got here is really nice, too. It's clean, it's open, it's bright, it's cheerful. I would imagine that you could have some special events in here as well. That's what we're planning. Yeah. Ah, okay. Absolutely. At one time in Chipley, uh, a third Mexican restaurant was opened. And everybody said, oh, what are we going to do? How can you support three Mexican restaurants? Well, it eventually did go away, but it, it stayed busy. Mm -hmm. um, I think you could argue that, again, everybody wants something new. Everybody wants something different. Absolutely. Yes. You may go to the same hospital every time you're sick. You may go to the same doctor every time you're sick. You may go to the same clothing store, but you never go to the same restaurant all the time. You want something different. Mm -hmm. You're kind of treading on some toes here. You've got, you're crossing these ethnic lines, so you're serving some of the same food that other restaurants, which is smart. Yeah. So if you get a whole family come in here, and the kids want pizza, but mom and dad want a calzone, and the kids go, oh, you know, I don't want that, that calzone. Or breakfast. Or breakfast. Now, will you serve breakfast all day long? Uh, we actually have planned to do until 10 a.m., but um, there's always exceptions to the rule. You know, you get to be a special little friend. You might be able to have breakfast anytime you want it. So. <laughs> yeah, understanding that during the lunch rush hour, and I would, I would venture to say that's probably going to be one of your busier times. Yes. I, I can understand you wouldn't want to do anything special necessarily, but maybe earlier and later than, than lunchtime. Absolutely. If I came in here, you'd maybe maybe make me a couple up with uh, hash browns. And Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I want to be able to accommodate people, so. So whatever we can do to, to do that. I want this to be the place that everybody wants to come to and I want to be your new best friend. You know, be here. You come in and say, I want something and we don't have it. We will have it the next time you come in. And if you come in and say, I want a hamburger or spaghetti and we don't, we might have some spaghetti back there that we can, it's not on the menu, but we can do it. Well, customer service at the end of the day is the name of the game. Absolutely. And people are going to come back if they have an enjoyable uh, experience. It's not about cost. No. It's not about price. You can't be exorbitant, but people understand, hopefully, that you have to make a living. And, and frankly, you don't want those who are looking for a bargain because you can't stay in business by cooking bargain. Right. That's right. So often, you know, people come into a restaurant, complain about the prices, come back the next time and realize that they've closed and can't understand why. Um, at the end of the day, you, you have to pay or be willing to pay uh, a reasonable amount for a good product. Right. And if you serve that good product, then you're going to have all the business you can handle. Going forward, um, are, do you have any plans uh, other than what you've got going right now? I mean, are there other things that you look to, to institute? Yes. That's all you're going to say? Oh. Uh, <laughs> Go ahead. Later, we want to add vegetables to the uh, dinner. And, okay. you know, but then supper, just have our, just our regular subs, pizzas, and stuff like that. But vegetables in the future. Yeah, and you are right here in the middle of the vegetable basket of Northwest Florida. 
uh, you can find all the fresh produce right here. We know. Yeah, that's that's really good. Do you do any business with registers across the street? Absolutely. We've talked to them about doing some of our meats for us. Uh, we're working with them. We're also working at the end of the road with uh, the, the produce company down the street uh, to have them work with us. And uh, I've actually gone into Chipley to Main Street Market there and talked to Paul and maybe he'll provide some of our produce for us. So uh, I like to keep things local as much as I can. So we're also looking for, you know, uh, the future we'd like to be able to do some carry out pizza possibly too. So, uh, you know, do some deliveries and things. So that's, that's a possibility. So. Well, we do the marketing for Main Street Market and have since Paul opened up and we've got a great relationship with him and they truly do have fresh product. Absolutely. And what amazes me and, and really impresses us with his business is that if he leaves and he comes back and there's any pine straw or any kind of shavings on the floor, he gets on his staff. He wants yes. them to sweep that floor whether Absolutely. he needs it or not every 15 minutes. Yeah. And he, they're constantly going around. If there's anything with a blemish or a spot, it goes. It goes. And so, and there's a, there's a real wisdom to what he's doing there. Absolutely. People can go in there and know they're getting quality products. So I'm glad to hear that you might be doing some business Absolutely. with him. Well, well, Paul actually had started when I was the food service director there in Washington County. Paul and I had worked together uh, to start having him provide our, our produce for us there. So gotcha. uh, I've worked well with him for a couple of years. So. Yeah, we have so much to offer right here in Was in, uh, in Holmes Jackson, Washington County. Absolutely. At the end of the day, especially when we're experiencing financial uh, heartburn, if you will, and things are a little bit tight, we need to consider ourselves all one community. Absolutely. And there is no county line or city limits yeah. when under those conditions. Mm -hmm. Somebody who lives in Chipley may work in Mariana. Uh, they may live in Mariana and go to church in Bonifay. Uh, they may, any number of permutations, they're, everybody's all over the place. And uh, many times a day, or many times a week anyway, my wife and I drive right through Cottondale on our way to Mariana or somewhere else. Knowing that we can have another option for meals is really huge. Absolutely. Especially dinner. What did you tell me your hours are going to be? We're going to be open for breakfast at 5 a.m., do breakfast from 5 to 10. Lunch will be from 11 to 2. And then dinner is going to be from 3 to 8 on Tuesday through Thursday. And on Friday and Saturday, we're going to be open until 9. You're not going to, you'd have a cot in the back? Absolutely. <laughs> we, we all live right down the street, and if we need to, you know, we can just kind of curl up in a corner and, and open the doors again in the morning, you know. Now, that's a pretty ambitious schedule, and, and there's nothing but work involved with a restaurant. Do you have other staff beside the three of you? Uh, actually, we have, one of my neighbors is going to be uh, my wait staff, and, and uh, her, her significant other is going to be our dishwasher. So we're starting out with friends and family, and that's, that's where you got to go. You know, we can't really afford to hire the extra staff right now, but... Uh, uh, we know it's going to be long hours, but it, it pays off in the end. So I would venture to say that a waiter or a waitress in this type of a restaurant would do quite well with tips. Absolutely. You're working with local people. Many times you know them by name. You've got, obviously, tourism uh, a corridor here. You've got yes. people that are going to be stopping on their way to or from the beach or other events and so forth. I would imagine that you could probably almost assure somebody that they're going to do fairly well when right. it comes to the gratuities. And, and that's pretty strong. And also, this kind of makes you one of the larger businesses in Cottondale as far as employers. <laughs> yeah, this is true. <laughs> so, uh, well, best of luck to you. Um, uh, we're going to be back when you start cooking. I want to uh, get with Mark and and, uh, and you, Connie, and, and see you make some of your signature dishes. Absolutely. Maybe over time we can get some experience uh, or get some good footage of you sh making some of your pizza. I'm a pizza nut. Uh, I grew up in the Northeast, and our, our big thing is after the football games, we'd oh, go to a bet. different pizza place you every... You betcha. Now, back up, uh, up there, everything, all the pizza places were owned by Greek people. Uh -huh. um, it, it, it's funny. <laughs> you would think that it would be all Italian but it was all the Greeks that yes. owned, owned that. And all the Jewish people owned the bakeries. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was kind of interesting the way that ethnic uh, shift was. But uh, again, thanks for taking the time today. Best of luck going forward. I'm glad. I'm sure you're glad to see the place rented yes. finally. Huh? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. <laughs> you talked her into renting it too, didn't you? Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for call calling us, Connie. Thanks, uh, I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Didn't get much out of you, Mark. But uh, he's, he's my other silent partner. Man. Yeah. Well, and I, I imagine that uh, you're about tired. I, I'm just imagining that since you're the only guy, probably a lot of the heavy lifting is falling to you. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks for taking the time. Yes, sir. Here today in Cottondale at the Cottondale Corner Cafe. Here right now with Connie, Jean, and Mark. Um, I'm, I'm hungry. I, we've been talking about food for a while now. Check them out. It, this is uh, soul food. It's comfort food. It's uh, what Granny and your mom used to make. And uh, if you want a good meal from breakfast all the way through dinner, uh, five days a week, it's right here in Cottondale, downtown Cottondale, at the Cottondale Corner Cafe. We'll be right back. <laughs> 